Hello, it's Mr. Drake, here to share another story with you. And I'm sharing a story with you on one of my favorite days of the year as a teacher. You know, the day, the school day before Halloween is a really exciting time for kids in elementary school and for teachers. Lots of kids come dressed up, we play games, we do activities, and we even, every year I read some scary stories to my students. And this is the scary story I've read for the last few years to my students. It's called, Tell Me a Scary Story, but Not Too Scary. It's by Carl Reiner, and it's got wonderful illustrations by James Bennett. And I read this story to my third graders today. And you know, third graders are pretty tough to scare. And they told me that it didn't scare them too much. So, we'll see what you think of it. But before I do that, my spider friend here has brought an eyeball. It's a fake eyeball. And it's kind of like an eyeball which our, the young man in our story finds at the beginning of the story. And he returns it to his new neighbor. And that's where things start to happen. So let's read this story together. Again. It's called, Tell Me a Scary Story, But Not Too Scary. All right. Now, before we begin, I'd like to tell you this story, but if it gets too scary for you, just tell, tell me, stop reading, and I'll stop, because I love you very much. Now, this grandpa's telling his kid that, but I'm not going to be able to stop for you. So if you get too scared in this story, you're probably just going to have to turn it off. But I hope you'll hang in there. All right. You know, when I was a boy, I lived in this neighborhood, and a tall man moved into the house next door. I introduced myself, and he smiled and said that his name was John Niwala. I like people who smile, but I didn't like Mr. Neewala's smile. It was a crooked, mysterious smile. I stood behind a tree and I watched him carry a large box into his house. Something shiny fell out and rolled across the street. It stopped in front of my feet. I picked it up, shoved it in my pocket and ran home. I couldn't wait to see what it was. It was a marble, a strange marble. I stared at it, and it stared back at me. I was a little scared. Well, not a little scared. I was very scared. I knew I would never fall asleep until I returned it. So that night, at midnight, I got out of bed, dressed, and went over to Mr. Niwala's house. The house was dark except for a small light coming from the basement. I knelt down and looked in. I saw something covered with cloth. It looked like something really creepy. So I shut my eyes. I hope this isn't getting too scary for you. Let's see what happens next. I leaned in closer. But before I knew it, the window flew off its hinge and I fell inside. Slowly I opened my eyes, and there on a chair was that creepy thing covered with a cloth. I wanted to get out of there. But before I could get out, there I heard a voice behind me. What are you doing here? I turned and saw the smiling John Niwala. I, I was looking to see if you were home, I stuttered. I, I'm your neighbor. We met earlier. Yes? He said suspiciously. So why are you here now? Don't you know never to go into a stranger's home alone? I know. My mom and dad told me that. But I came to return this, I said, handing him the marble. He looked at the staring marble. Then he stared at me. It's a, it's a very interesting marble, I said. 
Indeed, he said, smiling his crooked smile. I have many interesting things. Would you like to see them? He asked. Is this getting scary for you? Should I keep going? Okay, if you say so. Well, be very careful, said Mr. Niwala, smiling that smile. The stairs are steep. I wouldn't want you to tumble down. He gave me a look that sent shivers down my spine. He took my arm, and I grabbed the railing. The stairs creaked, and the light got dimmer and dimmer. Mr. Niwala led me to his work table. Then he turned on a light, and there on the table were hundreds of staring marbles, all staring directly at me. It felt like I was being watched by hundreds of cold, dead eyes. Do they look familiar? he asked. Before I could answer, he grabbed two of them. Then he picked up something weird from under a black cloth and ran up the stairs. Don't move, he shouted. There's someone I want you to meet. He laughed maniacally and slammed the door shut. Ha, 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 ha. I was trapped. Suddenly, the lights went out. I heard a door creak. And then, strange, scary noises came out of the dark. Something red with red beams of light shooting from its eyes was coming down the basement stairs. It came closer and closer. The hair in the back of my neck was sticking straight out. I finally saw it. It was alive. I can't describe this awful creature except to say they looked exactly, exactly like the picture on the next page. Should we turn the page? You really want to? Are you scared? The creature asked. Yes, I screamed and I ran to the stairs. Don't you have a question for me? The creature said, moving toward me. Yes, I said. What have you done with Mr. Niwala? I ate him, the creature laughed. He is inside of me. Would you like to see him? No, I yelled and ran up the stairs as fast as I could. The door was locked. I threw myself against it, but it didn't budge. Stay, the creature commanded. Turn around and see what's have, what I have done with your neighbor, Mr. Niwala. I turned and saw the monster grab his head and twist it. He struggled hard. He grunted. He groaned. He looked like he was trying to pull his head off. Yeah! I pounded on the door and yelled, Help! Help! Stay! He screamed and started for the stairs. I couldn't breathe. Is this getting too scary for you? Should I keep going? Okay. The horror monster came closer and closer. Get me out of here, he shouted. No, I shouted, pounding on the door. I'm getting out of here. No, the monster yelled, tugging at his neck. You must help me. What? I asked. The monster sounded strange and familiar now. Unstick this darn zipper, he screamed. So I grabbed the monster's head and I gave a frantic pull on the zipper. And there, as the head split open, was Mr. Niwala, safe and sound. It was only a costume. I scared you, didn't I? He asked. I feel silly. I laughed, weak with relief. Scaring people is what I do for a living, he said. Would you like to see my secret workshop? Isn't this it? I asked. No, he said. Come on. I think I would call it a night right then. Be careful, he warned, smiling his crooked smile. As I took my first step, he hit my shoulder and shouted, Hey! I screamed and went tumbling down, down, down. I landed hard on my bottom. Mr. Niwala came running at me. Hut! Don't come one step closer, I yelled, raising my fist. You pushed me. I tapped you, he explained to tell you that your shoelace was untied. It was. I had tripped on my shoelace. Mr. Niwala laughed and let me put on one of his really scary monster costumes he had made for a new horror movie. Wait till you see this monster. It will give you nightmares forever. If you're too scared to look at this horrible monster, 
don't turn the page. If you're not, we'll turn the page, but don't say I didn't warn you. Boom! I scared Mr. Niwa. We both laughed. He let me wear, keep the costume on and just walked me home so I could frighten my mom and dad. Boy, were they scared. Say, I bet you were wondering if Niwala was Mr. Niwala's real name. I did too, so I asked him. Mr. Niwala smiled and said, I thought a smart person like you would have figured out that Niwala is Halloween spelled backward. Mr. Halloween, I said laughing. I guess I'm not that smart. But you are. And that's our story. <laughs> what did you think of that story? Yeah, I use this mask with the students too. They said they weren't scared. But that does remind me, you know, there's something about this day the last day of school before Halloween. I wake up in the morning and my hair just won't do what I want it to. It goes crazy. And so finally I just have to stop and let it go. And the kids ask me what's wrong with my hair. And I can never figure it out. But you know, I've been thinking about that. My mother, I think, is to blame. Because my mother was born the day after Halloween. So growing up, Halloween was a big, big holiday in our household. Mom would give great Halloween parties for all the neighbors and our friends. We'd dress up. She would dress up, and she'd dress up like a witch. And I wonder if there was some truth to that witch costume. And I think maybe she cast a spell on my hair. But it'll pass in the morning. It'll be much better. It always is. So don't worry about me. I hope you enjoyed our story today. And we'll see if we can have another one soon. <laughs>